Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video will continue on ever so from our previous in which we looked at calculated columns. However, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at measures. So if we just expand our tasks table and go to revenue, you can see and we'll remind ourselves of what our calculated column looked like. So you can see we were able to reference each of our desired fields from the specific table. And remember calculated columns by default you have to, or you can only refer to fields within your specific table. So obviously the, the downside of a calculated column is it stores or physically stores that the result of this calculation in a column. So if we were to go into our data model or data view or table view even to get the right terms, go to revenue, you can see it just appears as an exactly uh, as another field. However, we want to see if we can create this as a measure. So before we continue, this video obviously, again, continues part of our existing playlist that is our Power BI course. If you want the link to that specific playlist or to get the downloads or the source content, you can find links to both of those in the description of this video. When it comes to creating a measure, you can do it you're obviously in the same format as creating a column. You click the ellipsis of a specific table, and then just click new measure rather than new column. However, me, I like to store my measures in their own dedicated table. To do that, all we need to do is go to enter data. Ignore all the rest of this. We'll, we'll cover off creating these static tables in a separate video. But all I'm gonna do is rename the table to measures and hit enter. And you'll see we get a new table added. The reason for adding an underscore is simply just to make sure that, that this specific table appears at the top of my list. Not much of an issue when you're only working with four tables, but obviously as more tables are added, it's just easier for this to be appearing at the top. So in order to create our measure, we can either go to the ellipsis on a specific field or just go to the table as a whole and click onto new measure. And then once it's obviously thought about it, you can see our formula bar appears with our measure here. So we'll call our measure total revenue because what we want to do is more or less replicate the result we got here with our calculated column. The first thing I'm gonna do is a couple of tests. So we'll do quantity and price separately. So I'm referring to these two fields which come from our source data, just to make sure we're getting the same values before we do our end result. So the first one I'm gonna do is quantity. Now, if I type the word quantity, you can see it, it comes up with some matching function names, but it doesn't give us the specific field in our tasks table. Now, the reason for that is it just doesn't work in measures. Measures are looking at our whole uh, data model. So it wants us to do any referencing to fields within a function. For me, I'm gonna use the sum function. So open brackets. And what we can now do is, as you can see, we've got all of our tables and fields available. I'm simply gonna write the word quantity, and you can see we get the task quantity field available to us. We'll just do an open brackets on that, or close brackets, sorry, hit enter, and we can see what the result comes back with. We can see it's thinking about it. Ah, we've now got total revenue added. And one thing I wanna do is if you just make note of this table icon for our measures, ta measures table. If I just delete this other unused column, just meaning that we've only got one measure now in that table. You can see our table icon is now updated to a measures icon. So we've now got a dedicated table with just our measures, which we can continue adding measures to, you know, as our need for them increases. What we'll do is select our table down here, drag in our new measure next to quantity, just so we've got things side by side. And yet we'll probably have to make the table a bit bigger. And there we go. We can now see if we scroll back to the top, Oh, it's getting a bit confusing with our dates here. Let's see if we can quickly make these a bit bigger. Just double clicking on the right edge of those. Yeah, that's a bit tidier. Make the table a bit bigger as well. So total revenue is our new measure we just created. And the desired outcome here is to make sure that our number of quantities match exactly with our actual quantity on the left there, which they will do. And we can see overall we've got that as well. Great, so we know quantity or our calculation for quantity is working as it should. What we can now do is go back to our measure and this time let's just test out price. So let's just type into here sum of price. We've got now our price field from our tasks table, hit enter. 
and we can see that this revenue column will now hopefully align to the column to the right. Yeah, so we can now see we've got sum of price, and as we scroll down, we can see the two are matching, and we can also see the totals are matching as well. What we could do is just change the format of this measure. So let's just go into here, and I'm gonna just change this to English United Kingdom, so that we get the comma and the pound symbol in there as well. And let's just up the decimal places to two as well, it just makes it easier to do our comparisons. Yep, so we can see that they have now reflected. So we tested quantity, that worked. We can also see price on its own now aligns both at the line level and the overall total. So great, so all we now need to do is combine our two together. So we can go into sum and let's get quantity from here. And so we've got our two separate formulas. Add the time symbol in the middle there, which is our shift asterisk. Hit enter, and we can now see we'll get our final result. And what I might also do here is let's just bring total revenue to the end. Perfect. So what we can see now is line by line, everything aligns. I don't know why my dates keep changing, but let's just format those back as well. So we can see everything is now aligning line by line. It's perfect. Yet we can see it's obviously doing the correct calculations. However, if we go to the total, we can see something has gone wrong. The total should be 29,900, just sort of 30,000, but we've actually got a number of 2.1 million. And the reason for that is because what our measure is doing is it's working great at the row level, but when it comes to our totals, it's taking our total of 254 and timesing that by our sum price, which is 8 1300 which of course is going to give you this 2.1 million rather than a, just a total of this column here so this is where obviously measures versus uh, the col calculated columns is a decision you have to make depending on your criteria so you can see a calculated column is going to be the right choice in this scenario to give us the desired result. So what we can do really with our measure here, albeit you probably wouldn't need this scenario because you've already got the result with your calculated column, but what you could do is remove all of this, enter a sum here, and then do uh, total revenue. Oh no, what's it called? It's called revenue, sorry. And we could do a sum simply of our calculated column to create a measure and you can see once that's loaded you can see that it's now loaded up correctly here so it's doing everything it should we can now see our totals are aligning so probably not the best example of uh, where you want to create a measure but what we'll be doing in future videos is showing you the more advanced scenarios and benefits of using measures uh, obviously where you would need them over a calculated column but hopefully stepping through this example with obviously the error we faced helped better explain and helped you to understand obviously the differences between a calculated column and a measure to help you make the right decision as you go forwards. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.